Hello, this is Vampire. Uh, just recently, I saw a video with Master Wang where someone asked him, um, would you use Wing Chun trapping techniques in a real fight? And surprisingly, he said no, that basically it is a waste of time. For practice, it's fine, but for real life application, all the guy needs to do is move, and once he moves, it's all gone. It's not gonna be there. So he said in a real fight, no way, he'd rather use elbows and stuff. And I thought that was very interesting answer from Master Wong, especially considering that he is a Wing Chun uh, practitioner, or Wing Chun expert, should I say. And for him to say that, that's very real. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, in this video today, what I wanna do is basically show you uh, my own findings about trapping. Um, so back in the day, back in the day, I learned trapping uh, when I was studying JKD, Wing Chun, and also, of course, Filipino martial arts. So from those three, and uh, actually there were some other Kung Fu styles too that, did, that utilized trapping that I studied and I trained with people that did it. But those are the main three, and I learned trapping, and I basically, I had to admit to myself that when it came to full contact sparring, I couldn't do it. I was like, it, it never came out. So what happened was in full contact sparring or in the challenge matches that I had, I used Thai boxing and on the ground used BJJ. Um, you know, there were some iffy uh, fights where it was kind of shady. And in that case, you know, I was worried about my well-being. So then, yeah, I resorted to more street oriented, oriented techniques from JKD. And so, you know, there, therefore, you know, it was more like the lead straight and side kick to the knee. And I used that kind of fighting style, but I wasn't able to utilize the trapping. It never came out. So uh, that being said, you know, I was like, how can I make trapping work in a real fight, in a real life situation? How can I utilize trapping? Because I wanted to, the, the techniques, I thought they made sense. They looked good. They were cool and, and you know, the explanations that I heard from the people that, that thought trapping was like the best thing on the planet, they made sense to me. You know, they're like, no one else does it. You know, this is, this is our special range. No one's an expert in this. So this is where we specialize, has the most attacks, the most weapons, the most tools available to you. All that made sense to me. And I was like, okay, how can I make it work? How can I make it work? And so basically it took me, uh, let's say about 10 years, over a decade of, of just trying to figure it out. Why did it take me that long? Uh, perhaps maybe it was because I wasn't entirely focused on just trapping alone. I was doing other stuff. So maybe that's why it took uh, 10 years. Maybe it's because I'm not a genius. But either way, what I'm about to present to you is my work that, like I said, took me over a decade and so this is kind of like a thesis paper for me, uh, a super long thesis paper, but I, I did this years, years ago, okay? So, but this is the first time that I get to present it on video, thanks to Mr. Stickman, who, if you're wondering what his real name is, I call him Bella. Bella as in Bella Lugosi, but I just like to call him Bella, but Stickman's fine. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let me just start off with uh, a basic trapping technique that you know, you're going to learn if you start studying trapping. And one of the first ones that I learned is this one right here. One, two, three, four, bam, punch right there. So it's a parry, a salute, tap, tap, punch. Okay, so one, two, three, four, boom, something like that. Okay, now we can do a variation from here. And uh, the variation is going to be, so from one, boom, Boom. Almost the same thing, it's just that after the parry, right here, instead of doing a salute, I'm doing a shot with my knuckles right here to their funny bone, the ulnar nerve right there. So boom, right there, and then one, two, that's the same, and the punch. So the rest is the same, okay? Um, so that puts in a destruction. Another one is to parry, boom, right here. This is the arm wrench, so one more time. Boom, the arm wrench is right here. Wrenching the arm, as you can easily see what's going on here. I'm cranking the arm this way, boom. You can do it repeatedly. You could sneak in an uppercut. So, boom, right here. Sneak that uppercut in there if you can. And then from here, grab behind the elbow, and you do an elbow strike onto their bicep. So, these are kind of like variations of the same type of trapping technique. 
Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to address destructions. So destructions is when I do a parry and bam, right in the funny bone right here, and also the other one where I was hitting the bicep. Another one I like to do is uh, when a punch is coming to the face right here, okay, I'm just going to elbow their fist upwards. I'm not going fist to elbow, they're, I mean knuckles to elbow, what I'm doing is I'm hitting them on the fingers right here, boom, like so, okay? So those are called destructions. We use them a lot in Filipino martial arts because our main concept is to defang the snake, attack the attack. So that's what we're doing here. Now, I gotta make this very clear. Traditionally, the way it's taught is that if you do a destruction, something like this, boom, is that now his fingers are broken, this arm is incapacitated. If you had actually hit him with an ulnar nerve right there, boom, in the funny bone, then now it's going to go numb and he can't use the arm anymore. The arm is taken out of the picture. If I elbow his bicep, boom, right there. Now the arm is incapacitated. And what I want to tell you from my own personal experience is that the percentage of the limb, it could be a kick. The guy throws a kick and I blast his shin with my elbow, all right? That's fine. That's a destruction. I'm just saying from my personal experience that the limb to become completely incapacitated from that is extremely rare, extremely, okay? Um, I have done it, I have ended uh, fights that way, and I have actually seen a few fights, and by few I mean two, two fights on YouTube, two professional fights where the fight ended from a destruction. One is the really famous Anderson Silva versus Chris Weidman. You could watch that and you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, it's a very, very low percentage, okay? And, and in my case, the reason why I was able to do it was probably because the quality of my opponent was pretty low. And that's why I was able to do it the times that I did, okay? Maybe out of those, one of them was probably really an even match for me, maybe. And, and the other one, uh, probably just was completely unfamiliar with something like that and just took him by surprise and shock that he just, you know, he gave up right there. So, you know, I, I was lucky in that sense. But what I want to say is the percentage is extremely low. So don't think, boom, and now his arm's going to be like, oh, I can't fight with this arm anymore. That, that doesn't happen, okay? It is possible. I'm just saying it's a very low percentage. Now, I want you guys to clearly understand that that doesn't mean I think these techniques are BS. Okay, so my main point is, as long as you don't expect this person to where you do a dis destruction like this and the person's like, oh, it's now nah, I can't use my hand anymore. As long as you're not expecting that and you expect that the person's going to keep fighting and they're going to be fine and they're not even going to be hurt, okay, then that's fine because the main idea is I didn't get hit by their punch. If you didn't get hit by it, that's a good thing. All right? It doesn't matter that you didn't break their hand. It's okay. You didn't get hit. So, you know, just be happy with that. And if you use it that way where you're not expecting to break or incapacitate anything, you just use it so that you're not getting hit as a defensive move, then that's the way to go. That's how I use it. And I will use it. Okay. So at this point, if I say, hey, Bella, throw me a punch. Boom. Here it is. This is pretty much the same thing that happens in a traditional martial arts school where the student is going to throw a punch and they completely freeze in time. They freeze in time so the instructor can now demonstrate, you know, boom, a technique and he can go into transitions. Okay, no problem because the student is frozen, all right? And there's nothing wrong with that because that's how you teach and that's how you learn, okay? If they just did it real time, I would have to uh, pause it, I would need a rewind button, I would need a slow motion, you know? So this is how you do it. You boom, so now it's nice and easy to see, and then people can now pick it up and practice it. It doesn't matter if it's a, a traditional martial arts or if it's MMA. In MMA, they would do the same thing. The student would completely comply with the teacher while the teacher is trying to show to the rest of the students because that's how you learn. It doesn't change regardless of style. Now when you practice it, that's where it's going to change, okay? So in MMA, now they go into the full contact where they're trying to apply it, okay? That's another story. So there's no problem with this to hold out the punch like that as long as you don't tell your students that this is the real thing. And that's a problem with 
a lot of traditional martial arts schools is that the teacher and the students think that this is the real thing. They probably think that in real life it's just going to be a little bit faster, but the rest is pretty much that's how it's going to go. You know, just like the way the teacher demonstrated it. And that is incorrect. A real uh, life situation is a lot more dynamic. It's a lot more complex and that's not how it goes at all. So as long as you don't think it's the real thing, then it's good. All right, there's nothing wrong with this, like I said. So, okay, but there are things that we can do to make this a little bit more realistic. Okay, so we can add things, all right? We don't wanna to add too much because if we do too much, then it's just gonna be a chaos mess and it's like, well, let's just go at it full, full force. That's what it's gonna turn into. And once again, that's, you're not gonna get very technical that way, okay? So what we wanna do is incrementally change like one or two things at a time and then practice that for a long time and then change here, once again, a little, little one or two things again and then practice that for a while and then, you know, so incremental is the key word. So one of the first things that you could do is make your target actually accurate. So he doesn't have to punch fast, but if I didn't do anything, it would actually hit me, okay? So the strike doesn't have to be super hard or fast, but if the other person didn't do anything, it would actually touch where it's supposed to hit. So if it's like this, it's actually going to make contact. So that's one of the things you can do. Another thing you can do is basically this, where you throw a punch and it goes like that. I just brought my hand back. You don't have to bring it back super fast, but you bring it back, okay? And when you do that, the other person needs to operate at about the same speed or slower. Because if the other person operates faster, that means that you expect yourself to be faster than your opponent. And why would you train against, you know, why would you train for someone that's going to be weaker than you? That doesn't kind of, that doesn't make sense to me. For a self-defense situation, the other person, you know, when you really need it is when they're more formidable than you are. So it doesn't make sense to do that. So make sure that you train and control your speed. So if your partner does this, then you can't be going like super fast. And just, you know, what's up with that? So try to match the speed or even go slower. The other thing is, other than bringing the hand back, another thing you could do is this, boom. Okay, you see what happened to me right here? I threw the punch and my arm did a complete follow through. So I didn't bring it back, but it did a follow through. And you see my body was right here and now it's over here, okay? My body configuration has changed. So whatever he was thinking of targeting, now it's moved, it's everything shifted. So all the targets is a little bit off now. Okay, so now once you start adding things to make it just a little bit more realistic, from my own personal experience, I could tell you that now I can no longer do boom. I can't do stuff like this, boom. This, I cannot trap from over here. I'm not fast enough, that, that's the bottom line. The speed is, is too much, so in order for me to make this happen in order for me to pull that off I have to be five to ten times faster than what I am right now and I'm the average person and if it requires for me to be five or ten times faster than I am in order for the technique to work then I think there's a problem in the way that you're training okay so you know I don't believe that it takes a grandmaster for the move to work okay so the average person with some practice dedicated practice and stuff and understanding of the strategy should be able to do it you know no guarantees that it's going to work but they should be able to to do it you know and and the percentage should be decent it shouldn't be astronomically like there's no way you're going to pull it off all right so right now i believe the video is way long enough so i apologize i'm going to have to stop it right here for part one uh basically in part one i just kind of covered you know, uh, the problems with the way it is at this, at this moment, okay? And that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the techniques. You know, please, I'm not against traditional martial arts. This is a great way to learn it. The chi sao, the sticky hands, you know, the hubud, lubud, you know, all this kind of partner training. This, this is great stuff. Please practice it. You'll learn sensitivity. At the very least, you'll learn sensitivity, you know, and you'll learn how to be uh, good partners with, with your training partner and that's very very important as well that you're not just going to damage each other but when it comes to application now we have to change it why because we're changing 
the attacks. So instead of just throwing an attack and stopping it right here, I just said to you guys, let's make the attacks a little bit better. So let's make it to where you're actually gonna hit the target. Let's make it to where you're bringing the hand back. Let's make it to where, boom, you're doing a follow through. So the, the attacks are evolving. Therefore, the techniques that you're gonna be doing, this kind of stuff, need to evolve too. It can't just stay the same. So it's not that I'm putting down what's traditionally taught. I'm just saying that now, because the training is changing, the technique will also adapt as well. So anyway, that's it for part one. Thank you for watching and take care, folks.